constrained locally by what we are allowed to do from on high, which is nationally. However, when Caroline talks about the word hope, that is what we bring, even to local politics. Because even within the narrow margins of what we're allowed to do locally, there is room for manoeuvre. So the first thing that we would do on the City Council actually has nothing to do with the budget. It has to do with democracy. There is a long way we can go on the City Council to restore democracy, which has been gradually siphoned off locally over the last, well, over the whole time Labour has been in power, but most especially <coughs> since they were in power nationally and brought in policies which made it possible for local councils to become less and less democratic. So, for example, giving councils the option to move to a cabinet model and with most councillors just in an, uh, a disempowered advisory role, immediately you got a position which is in fact getting worse to this day with the election of a supreme leader on the city council. You got a position where some councillors were more equal, i.e. had more voice than others. Now this isn't something the city council had to do, it's something that they chose to do out of the options available to them. And it's something that the Greens have criticised and wanted to reverse ever since it came in. And it is something that we can reverse. We don't have to have a single supreme leader on the City Council. And we don't have to have decisions made by one or two councillors in private. Within the law, we can still go back to decision-making committees and decisions made in the public eye. We can also reinstate area committees. Area committees were very popular with the public because they were the means by which, and I'm sure most of you will remember them, because it wasn't that long ago we had them, where planning decisions were made every single month in the communities they affected. And councillors were forced to make their decisions, albeit with the advice of officers, in the public eye, in the communities they affected, and the public were welcome to have their say. In fact, they had to have their say, because nobody's going to refuse the public their say in a public forum in the communities. It's just not, it's just not safe for people. They won't get elected if it's seen that they're being undemocratic. However, now they're being undemocratic very much behind the scenes, and I don't think people, it, I mean, it may be that everyone here is the exception. I don't think the majority of people in Oxford are aware just how undemocratic Oxford has become. Because the City Council has been very clever. They've replaced the democratic area committee, decision-making area committees, with area forums. So that people go along to those area forums in the belief that they have a voice and a say. Actually, that voice and that say counts for nothing. Because the decision has very often been made behind the scenes, before the area forums, um, and it's been made regardless of what people say at the area forums. The area forums are talking shops, and in a sense they're a place where people can take their energy, the thing that they want to happen, they can say it there, they can go away and feel they've done something, and actually there is no obligation on the part of the council to listen to them. So the Greens would restore the powers to area committees, bring decision making back into the public, and that wouldn't cost anything, <coughs> it would cost people time. However, the Greens also do have budget decisions that they made on the City Council. The City Council currently holds a reserve fund of £5.2 million. There is no need to hold a reserve fund of £5.2 million at the same time as making, making cuts on the ground. So the Greens put forward a proposal to put £500,000 into a sustainable jobs fund. And that sustainable jobs fund would do various things. One thing would be to insulate all council housing, which, like Caroline said, would create jobs, would make sure that the poorest people would have warm housing, and would save those poorest people money every year, thus giving them more spending power. So in Oxford, that would be a win-win-win situation not hard to do and would bring, give something very real 
to some of the poorest members of our public. We would reinstate the free garden waste collection. At the moment, only one in ten households are using the paid for garden waste collection. So there's more fly tipping, there's more landfill waste, and the cost is borne by taxpayers. The cost is borne by our council tax. So why not use that same council tax to have a free garden waste collection? It actually costs more for people to go out and collect rubbish from where it's been fly tipped and then take it to the dump than it does to just collect garden waste from the houses and take it to a place where it can be turned into compost or chips or mulch for the use of all of us. We would abolish pest control charges which have been brought in because basically what's happening with the introduction of pest control charges is people are not able to afford them. And so the number of pests, rats, moths, all the sorts of things that we hate to have in our houses, basically more misery, more pests in Oxford and more danger of all of us being contaminated by those things. One of the examples of the things that the City Council is doing in the name of e economic growth, which has proved very unpopular, but which they are not changing their mind about, is their decision to close Temple Cowley Pool in the face of incredible opposition. And instead, what they want to do is build an Olympic-style swimming pool in Blackbird Lees and in the process use up a piece of valuable green space in Blackbird Lees where public services are minimal. This will cost between £9.2 million and £13 million. The cost if we were to refurbish the two pools we have now, the Temple Cowley Pool and the Blackbird Lees Pool, would be in the region of £3 million. Where is the sense in that? To a Green, that just doesn't make sense. To the three major parties, that somehow makes sense. And it's because the three major parties, or the three great parties as we call them, think in terms endlessly of economic growth, which actually means on the ground economic loss. Another big thing the Greens would do, which is different from what the other parties would do, is on the Westgate site, where the three biggest parties would like to develop massive chain stores all the way down to Oxpens Road, right in the middle of what is at the moment two sets of affordable housing, St Ebbs and St Thomas's. Right in the middle of that would be chain stores, and Botley Road and Abingdon Road, if this goes ahead, are going to be absolutely chocker with private traffic trying to access those chain stores from out of Oxford. Because if you look at the way the figures are meant to balance up in the proposed Westgate development, they need all 1,337 1, parking spaces that they want to put in, full all the time, with a 40 minute turnover. That's what they need to keep this proposed centre afloat. And in order to build it, <coughs> one of the things they would have to demolish would be Abbey Place housing. 14 city centre, purpose built housing units for people who are disabled or who need to live in the city centre. Council homes, they actually belong to all of us. They're paid for with our money. So the city council is not treating our assets and our land as though they belong to us. The city council is behaving already like a private developer <coughs> and they are behaving like a private developer who has a right to transfer our assets, they think of it as their assets, to other private developers. And this absolutely has to stop. And the Greens have a strong voice opposing <coughs> these things and put forward budgets showing how they're possible. The city is blinded by the idea of economic growth. They forget about air pollution, homelessness, chain store domination, and the need for high quality jobs. The Green Party will speak up on a local level for national things too. We won't forget that banks right in this city, Lloyds, the Royal Bank of Scotland, have our money in their hands. And even though they could now begin to be paying it back, they're not. But the right to peacefully protest has been undermined by successive governments, and we support the right to peacefully say that the way things are going are not right, and there is an alternative way forward. I'm going to leave it at that, but I would hope that people will vote Green because they believe both in democracy 
and in a way forward which has at its heart hope and a true way that we can move forward without heading into a dead end. Thank you.